Y'all have a good week? Amen. 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 The Capitol didn't have a good week. <laughs> Capitol Hill didn't have a good week. Amen. But just look at somebody and say, sit tight. Sit tight. You might as well just pop your popcorn <laughs> because it ain't, it, it ain't nowhere near over. Man, it's not, they have a long script for 2021. They know how to provoke folks. Oh, they know how to get you. I mean, folks that I know know better call me upset. And I said, you upset at TV? Bro, you don't know this is staged? Every bit of it is staged. They knew exactly what they were doing when the police officers opened the gate up and let them folks in. You know the, you know the police let them in. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. They knew and they, they still know. And they have more to come. Because they're, if you see what they're doing, they're manipulating, they're manipulating people with social media. Like I told you in social esteem, that's, that's the beast right now. And it's telling folks how to act. Yeah. And they, I mean, you're going to suspend the president of the United States account? And brothers was calling me, yeah, but I mean, freedom of speech don't give you the right to yell fire in a crowded theater. Who yelled fire? <laughs> he was just saying that the election was rigged. Which it was, which it always is, and always has been. He was just the first president bold enough to say it. Because he's dogmatic, and you know, sometimes he's imbecilic. He crazy sometimes. I'm crazy sometimes. I say something crazy sometimes. We just, you just don't want your president talking like that. But I tell you what, you gonna want a real man in the White House when China get ready to do what they're getting ready to do. China has genetically modified soldiers. What Hitler's been, what Hitler tried to do, China's done it. Genetically modified folk. Now they was already some bad folk with that Kung Fu. Was that racist? That ain't racist. That's what they do do come from. That is Chinese. Chinese theater. Y'all ain't watch that? That's not racist. Is it racist? I don't feel like it is. It's the truth. So they was already, they would already just whip you every time you ran up. You got slapped down with that Kung Fu. <laughs> Remember every time you watch a Kung Fu movie, it, it was so funny because me, Jonathan, and Landon, it was like automatic. Every time the movie's out, we jump it up and do it. We, we do it karate on each other. Just like every time Star Wars go out, we grab lightsabers and we, we fight with those. I mean, it's just... <laughs> but Chinese, Chinese theater, I mean, not Chinese theater, Chinese have Kung Fu. That's the theater. They got it for real. Now they ain't genetically modified. Yeah. Yeah. And they have the world's largest and fastest supercomputer to control them. That's not, that's not make believe. Don't you get worried about it. Hey, Amen. Don't you get worried about it because Kung Fu got to submit to the name of Jesus as well. Yeah. Hey man, I don't care if it's robo flu kung, robo food. I don't care what you got in your system, bro. I got the Holy Ghost in my system. Amen. I have the Holy Ghost in my system. I don't need no genetic modifications. Amen. That's why I don't need no vaccine. I have an immune system. And if I treat it right, it'll it'll get me through this time like it does every year. Amen, but that ain't what I'm going to talk about today. Amen. But anyway, I just had to say that so you would just stop letting TV get your heart beating fast. Amen. And oh, man, look, 
No, it's, it's not what you think. It's planned. Amen. It's planned. And we have more to come. Adamybeliever.com forward slash 2021 part two. Overcome, look at somebody say, overcoming your past. So we're going to overcome 2021. Last week, we learned how to overcome what? Offenses. This week, we are learning how to overcome our past. How many of you want to overcome your past? Amen. And I don't need nobody reminding me of who I used to be. That's the beauty of being in Christ. Amen. I'm not trying to go back. So I need help. We all need help overcoming our past so that we can. And most of the time, it's just overcoming people's opinion of your past. Amen. Because people will try to hold you to something, especially if they don't like who you became. Don't you know just living right? offends people it offends people that won't live right being blessed of God offends people when you blessed and the blessings of the Lord are on your life you're offensive to people that don't get blessed you know the, uh, the Friday Thursday or Friday I was just telling my son and uh, an elder in my office you know they've been doing this spamming stuff on the phones anybody been getting spams so now they got a bright idea of putting you in a group text. That you, and you can't get out of it. Now I know these phone folks are smart enough to know how to get you out, especially on the iPhone. Get me out of the thread, but as soon as an Android is on there, you can't get out the thread. You just trapped. You trapped in green bubbleville. But long as it's, you know, iPhone, you can just leave the conversation. Soon as they stick that Android on, you, you just stuck. So they put me in one with hundreds of numbers, and all of them was the first three digits of my phone number. So just a, it's just a spam. And then they start sending a bunch of porn links. Yeah, to the preacher's phone. So I called at and I was like, say, there's no way. And they, you know how they read that script? I don't talk to nobody reading the script. If I know more than you, I'm not talking to you. So I'm talking to him. I did that. I did that. I did, okay, next person. Give me somebody else. They give me somebody else. I did that. I did that. I need a, and they told me the name of it, a, um, what do you call that specialist? A senior. I need a senior specialist. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I need a senior specialist because I know more than all the rest of y'all. Give me the senior specialist. Because I know, I mean, I know Apple stuff. I do. And it, so they gave me the senior specialist, and they were like, yeah, that's nothing we can do. I was like, you're a senior specialist, and China has genetically modified soldiers, and there's nothing you can do with your phone system? Soldiers swimming over here right now. Swim, they genetically modified, they swimming. And there's nothing, you, you can't take me off this perverted thread. So, and I don't recognize none of them. They just kept doing it, kept doing it. So, me and one of the numbers, I don't know who number it is, got the bright idea to just start preaching on the thread. And putting scriptures on the thread. Oh, we started putting scriptures, praying for them. You don't have to be like this. God bless you. I, I, I speak the blessings of the most holy God on you. The most high God, eternally existed in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He'll save your soul just like he did mine. Oh, they ain't been texting. They ain't been sending stuff, Elder. Because the power of God works. Amen. Look at somebody say, the power of God works. Amen. So now you know what to do. You can't just ignore them because they're going to keep doing it. It's going to keep dinging your phone. It's going to get annoying. You can't block them all. I tried that. Block them all. They just add new numbers to it. So I'm like, there's no way out of this. And the Holy Ghost said, oh, yes, there is. You ain't used me yet. And we forget to do that. We forget the power that we really have. You can pray under your breath and stop the hand of the enemy. 
under your, you don't even have to be loud. The Bible said Hannah did that. She prayed under her breath and got the greatest priest to ever live. Other than Jesus, of course, the high priest, Samuel. Amen. So you can pray. So anyway, let, let, let's get in this message. I'm just, amen. But overcoming your past, we need to overcome our past in this year. Because if you're thinking about your past, you're not thinking about your present or the future. And God wants to use you mightily in this year as an example of what he can do. Y'all believe that? Yes, Amen. I don't have to say, oh, there's going to be a great end time revival because the Bible don't say that. Right. Folks, I, I, I don't know where TBN got that. Oh, there's going to be great tribulation, but there's going to be a great revival too. And that great... Re and then great to them is a whole bunch of people. That's never been great to God. Never been. Because God narrowed it all the way down to 11 guys. And they changed the whole world. That's great to God. Because greater is he that is in you. Look at somebody say, it's not about you. It's about who is in you. Amen. Well, don't let me preach before the message. Amen. All right. Where other religions and belief systems fall short is in their inability to truly set you free from who you used to be. That's why I'm not getting into no yoga and Buddha and Hinduism and all that because it don't change who you are. It makes you feel good for a moment in time while you're in a trance. Then you, gotta, you can't work in the trance. You can't go to work with your hands like this. You can't pick nothing up. You can't take a gong and a bell to work. Congo ringy, pong. And every time the boss tell you to do something you don't want to do, pong. Okay, now what is that? I'm going to fire you next time you hit it. Pong. It don't change you. It's all superficial. It's all outward stuff. It can't get inside of your body. False religions use chanting, yoga positions, study. Y'all know yoga positions. Y'all know that's demonic. That's false God. That's part of the occult. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So quit. Look at somebody say, stop doing it. Stop doing it. If they're calling it yoga, don't do it. Because yoga brings the spiritual aspect to it. Without yoga, it could just be plain old stretching. Amen. I might be doing the crouching tiger. I don't know. All I know is I'm crouching. The yoga put the tiger on the end. Because <laughs> they want to attach a spirit to it. No, I'm just, I'm stretching. So you can stretch and you can do all of that. But look at somebody and say, don't call it yoga. Is that plain? Amen. And then people say, well, why can't I call it yoga? Go call it yoga then. And get a, a body full of arms of Cali. Husband don't know who he in the bed with. How many people in here? Who put all these people under the sheets? All this clapping. All this. Church just put you in the band. <laughs> this, this girl got some sound effects you ain't never heard before. <laughs> you done went to the yoga class. Stay out of the yoga class. All that junk. And, and you know, Christians, I mean, we ought to just, some stuff we ought to not want to get into. You ought to look at the way they bending and say, you know what? First of all, my body will never do that in this life. Second of all, some of that stuff is sexual. How you a Christian? Um, yeah, I'm getting ready to do my pole dancing class. Something wrong with you. Why you dancing around a pole? Don't you know that's worship to Nimrod? That's where it originated. Oh, yeah, but, you know, I sanctify. Why you want to sanctify a pole dance? Why you want to feel like a stripping slut? What is in you making you want to feel like that? Right. 
stripping the shirt. I mean, on the pole to Shirley Caesar. You trying to play gospel music. <laughs> In the name that is above every name. You stupid. That's stupid. A Christian. Po- I know it's on YouTube and a man is t- the man is teaching it. He can't direct this choir because of COVID. So he done went and got on a pole. The total praise. Yep, total praise. I will lift my eyes to the... (laughs) Just a punk. You a punk if you on a pole. If you on a pole, you a punk. This ain't no man had no pole. Man, where was I? False religions use chanting, yoga position, studies, music, and trances to cause a person to escape from their reality and join in with a new one. So they're using all these things, chanting and and yoga positions, and folks do that chanting in church, and the Bible tell you not to do it. You ain't got to say thank you, Jesus, a thousand times to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And speed up and speed up till it's just one long blur. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you got to feel, you got to record it and slow it down. He really is saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> You don't have to do that. Hey, man, we used to think that. Like, if, you didn't, if your mouth wasn't ashy and stuff caked all up, you wouldn't feel. You have to keep saying it. Thank you, thank you. Now, say praise the Lord. 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 <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. That's chanting. We don't chant. You don't have to chant. Yoga position, study, then music, of course, and trances to cause people to escape reality. These are forbidden. Look at somebody say forbidden. Forbidden Forbidden by the word of God because your human spirit is reserved for the true and living God alone. So all of these methods are to make you clear your mind so that something else can access your human spirit. God gave you a guardian. In your frontal lobe to protect your human spirit from invasion. So the devil creates things to uh, block it, inhibit it, or bypass it. And music, of course, is the number one. Go into your mind without your consent. Disturb your conscience without your consent. These are forbidden by the word of God because your human spirit is reserved for the true and living God alone. 1 Corinthians 10 and 21, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of what? Devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of what? So you can't do yoga and be saved. I need to get that recorded. Which camera's on? I see. You can't be, you can't do yoga and be saved. Amen. And they don't like absolutes. You know, they, they, you can't say that. I get emails, you know, when I, when I preach a message. Yeah, brother, I, you know, I like what you said, except for the part. Why you send me that? Because I don't care. I don't care what you think. People don't like absolutes. They don't like you to say that. You can't be saved and do yoga. Now, wait a minute. See, nobody can judge but the Father. Uh-huh, the Father judges through the Word, and I read the Word. And the Word just told me you can't sit at the same table with Cali. If you feel with the Holy Ghost, you plan to go to heaven, you're going to take Cali with you. you at the table with Cali. <laughs> see, you, know, I mean, you can't be in no fraternity and sorority. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. Them the same devils. They're all Egyptian gods, Greek gods that you at the table with. Paul called them devils. That's who he was talking to. The folks that worship Diana and all the other Greek gods. Say, you can't do that. You can't pledge to a false god. 
Amen. And fraternity and sororities ain't nothing but a grand emasculation because the men serve Athena and the women. So all of them submitting to the female spirit, feminism. That's why they all want Kamala in the office. Because of that spirit. She's from Indian descent. She ain't black. She's black because you want her to be. I preach in here. Then why she gotta be black? A good leader, I don't care about their color. The power of God is the only power that can completely change who we are physically, mentally, and spiritually. Amen. That's the power of God. We've seen, I've seen it in action all over this world. For 20 years, I saw God do stuff that no human could do. I saw tattoos rise up on people's bodies. I saw brands get hot like fire on people's bodies. I've seen people levitate. Voices change. There's a supernatural aspect to all of this that the devil wants you to forget about. He wants you to think when you listening to Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, it's just music and you dance. And that's what he wants you to think. He don't want you to know that you just opened yourself up for witchcraft. That's changing everything around you. Everything around you. Every butt shake. Witchcraft is doing something. This stuff is real. It's real. Power of God is the only power. It's the only power. I mean, you know, when I got, I pledged in a, a sorority, you know, when I was younger, but you know, I don't really, I'm not really active. And I, did you denounce it? Did you denounce it? Because I've seen it when I'm praying for those folks that have been through that ritual to get in it. I've seen spiritual manifestations happen. Me and my wife saw a girl's brand literally almost catch fire on her body. Because she pledged her allegiance to a devil when she went in, went through. And dudes marry them. You, they, they do the whole ceremony during the marriage. Singing that old witchy song. In the what? The sister circle? Didn't I just talk about that? At point 13? The sister circle? Can I preach in here? Yeah. Amen. Ain't nobody trying to fill up no church. Amen. We become new creations in God. So the power of God is only, look at somebody say, the only power that can completely change who we are physically, mentally, and spiritually. We become new creations in God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And God told me to mention all of this stuff because when Jesus comes back, you ain't going if you worship in another God. That's idolatry. Clean. Look at somebody say, clean it up. That's what the warning is for. That's what the preacher is for. My job is to get you ready for the coming of the Lord. Because he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Once we become new, Satan becomes our arch enemy. So once you get saved, Satan gets your phone number. Put you on the three. <laughs> Jab turkey. He targets us to prove that we are unfit for what God has promised. So the problem isn't the promises of God. The problem is people feel like they're unfit for it. They don't feel like they're worthy of it. And that had a lot to do with the church over preaching stuff, over spiritualizing stuff, and making folks feel like they're inadequate. Ain't nobody adequate but the pastor. Amen. Ain't nobody adequate but the people he say are adequate. Amen. Trying to live, uh, trying to appear to live too perfect. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So the devil looks for ways to get us to fall so he can have something to constantly remind us of. 
So he wants a big fall. Not no little fall, not you taking some gum out of the store and taking off running. Not no little stuff like that. <laughs> I guess that's not little. That's a, is that a misdemeanor? Amen. Lord bless some of y'all. Some of y'all got away with a misdemeanor. Mm. Now, ladies. Now, ladies. Amen. Some of y'all got caught. And you need to get caught because today is now, ladies. Tomorrow is our armored truck. You just testing to see how much your heart can handle. <laughs> That's a huge jump. <laughs> he looks for ways to get us to fall so he can have something to constantly remind us of. He is the what? The devil is the accuser of the brethren. So his job is to remind us of our past sins and make us feel we are lost and what? Hopeless. The accuser of the brother. Look at somebody and say, don't be an accuser. That is not our job. We don't accuse people. Amen? Somebody, oh, but you ex minister, I ain't accusing nobody of sinning. Never. That ain't my job. Now, I take what you said and accuse you of saying what you said when you said it. That's not accusing. That's just being a good steward. A good shepherd. Protecting the sheep. Amen. Crying aloud and sparing not. According to the word. I can't worry about your feelings if, if, if you're entering that into the word of God as truth. And it's not. It's my job to tell you that's not truth. Amen. But you don't be an accuser. I ain't accusing them of sin. Amen. Amen. I'm not even accusing them of going to hell for what they did. You just need to quit. It's going to lead somebody to hell. But you got to be mature to understand this. Amen. Amen. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. So his job is to remind us of our past sins and make us feel we are lost and hopeless. Now that's the devil's job. The Bible tells us, and now I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now, comes, uh, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. This is the point. For the what? Accuser of our brethren is cast down. So the Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. So if you ever wanted to know who keep bringing up your junk, look at somebody and say, it's the devil. It may look like your uncle. Huh, I didn't want to go as close as wife and husband. I'm going to give them a break this week. It may look like your cousin, but it's the devil. The devil got to use a body. Amen. So he's going to use somebody that hate themselves to hate on you. Because people that don't hate themselves won't hate on you. People that don't hate themselves don't hate. Because hate's not in them. They don't hate themselves. You got to have hate in you to hate somebody. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I don't hate anybody. Man, ain't no, I don't hate anyone. You better not be walking around hating somebody. You ain't going to heaven. That's another absolute. You ain't going, how you going to go to heaven hating somebody? The Bible says if you hate your brother, you hate God. Can I keep preaching in here? It's a good message. Then he takes the consequences of our sin. And blames us to the point of depression and anxiousness. Folks on depression medication. Anxiety medication. Because they can't get past what they did. The devil keeps bringing it up. Bringing up their mistakes. Bringing up their issues. What they did. The consequences of what they did. The devil keeps bringing it up. Won't let them live it down. So they become depressed and anxious. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vig vigilant. Because the adversary, the devil, or your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion does what? Walk about doing what? Whispering in folks' ears. He's looking at what you did, looking at your past, and whispering in your ear, reminding you, remember the big mistake you made. 
He ain't talking about the now latest. Yeah, he talking about that baby out of wedlock. Those drugs. That crack. Yeah, all the stuff. You know, because when you say crack, it ain't really about the crack. It's about the crack lifestyle in the crack house. You know what you got to do in the crack lifestyle to get crack? Crackheads don't have money. <laughs> That's cocaine. That's different. <laughs> cocaine people have to have money. Crack heads don't have money. So they just do stuff to get crack. Yeah. And the devil want to keep reminding you of what you did during the crack days. Amen. Or back when you was wilding. Amen. So he says he's seeking, walking around, waiting for an opportunity to bring your past up, bring up who you used to be. So he can cause you to be depressed and anxious. You know you can't worship God depressed. Depression is the opposite of joy. You got to have joy to worship the Lord. The devil will keep you feeling like a failure because you went through a divorce, had children out of wedlock, had an abortion, or have a criminal record, etc., the devil will make it your fault that your children are wayward or your marriage failed. He will constantly beat you down with your past. Can I keep preaching? Boy, y'all acting like y'all ain't done none of this stuff. Talk the truth, Pastor. Yeah. Keep bringing your past up. And if you're married, don't bring your spouse. You know, you don't bring up old stuff. Because then that makes you the what? The accuser. Yeah, that makes you an accuser. That, makes, that means the devil is speaking right through you. You have totally lost control of your body and the devil is speaking. Can I preach in here? Yeah, me and my wife, we had to make that pact years ago. We don't bring up old stuff. Why would we? If we love each do we love each other today? Then, then I ain't bringing up nothing. She ain't bringing up nothing. It's gone. And you need to do, look at somebody and say, you need to do the same thing. Come on, women. I didn't hear no female voices. You need to do the same because women, you know, they don't forget nothing. Oh, but you just let it reside in your neck. Don't let it out. Just let your neck just swell up with it. Because you, if you're bringing up his past, he can't, he can't lead you into the future. He can't make nothing better for you. He said he was sorry. <laughs> oh, that ain't good enough. <laughs> he fell out in church. You know, he got to just go crazy during the service to show how sorry he was. Preacher, but need prayer. <laughs> Interrupt the host. <laughs> Man, it's offering. I need prayer right now. Here, my money. I need prayer. <laughs> you just put on a grand show. Preacher touch you. Oh! Ah! Just, okay, I forgive you. <laughs> Y'all didn't grow up like I did, Jack. And we knew exactly what it was. Oh, yeah, we know what he did. <laughs> he, doing, he doing cartwheels and Arabian flips and flipping through the aisle like the Olympics. Like he in a competition. Dude. Uh -huh. he, was at that, he was at the juke joint. And she caught him again. Amen. Well, forgive, let it go. Look at somebody say, let it go. And don't be hunting and searching for it. I, that's the part I don't understand. What you hunting for? He in the shower. You got his phone just holding it up to the light trying to see his fingerprints. Okay, the code is boom, 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 boom. 
<clears throat> if you don't trust God with it, it ain't going to work out. You got to trust God. You don't have power. You don't have power. You're going to make yourself crazy. Then you're going to make a decision you regret because you didn't depend on what God could do. Amen. amen. Women too. Men, amen. amen. Every dude shake your wife's hand ain't the enemy. <laughs> amen. Just because you ain't shaped like you was when you married her. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't be falling behind the personal trainer. Look at, <laughs> Look at somebody say it's about trust. Man, you better learn how to trust. And it ain't trusting the person, it's trusting God. Learn how to trust God. God will whip your man's butt. <laughs> Amen. I done got them whippings. I've been wanting, sometimes I want to go in there and stop her from praying. You hush that. <laughs> hush that noise. He gonna get me in trouble. You know I work for him. Hush. You gonna mess everything up. <laughs> I'm serious. She be in that prayer. And you know, she don't be yelling or nothing. I told y'all about that too praying your husband stuff out loud. Oh, God! Uh, you know how he is. Touch his eyes, Lord. Them old wandering. Lord God! Blind him! As he goes to and fro. Don't be doing that either. But you pray. You, you trust God. He said, vengeance is mine. God can, look at somebody and say, God can fix it. His power is that great. But see, women don't want to get that relationship with the Lord. They'd rather watch Housewives of Atlanta and learn how to handle everything ratchet. You better handle it in prayer. Amen? I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody needed to hear this today. Amen. Pornography is cheating too. Amen. Bible says if you look at the porn a woman. They don't have to be naked either. Uh oh. See that? Because that Instagram, it's a whole bunch of women on there with their clothes on. And you on there and shouldn't be. Some of them profiles. Well, I'm just on Instagram. You need to get off. Quit looking. You know, one thing leads to another. You're going to graduate just like from the now ladies to the armored truck. You're going to graduate from the... Let me preach this message. Because I know I'm preaching. He will constantly beat you down, the devil, with your past. He will even sin. Oh, the oh, no, 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 no. He will even use family members, friends, and others that are jealous of you or miserable in their own lives to constantly bring up your past and make you feel incapable of moving beyond it. Why are jacked up folks always bringing up your past jacked up stuff? Will you worry about your life, bruh? Romans 2 and 1, therefore thou art inexcusable, old man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou, thou do what? <laughs> Condemn yourself. You can't judge anybody without condemning yourself. That's immediate. For thou that judgest do what? The same thing. Because we all have sin. So you're not going to make one sin worse than the other and try to call out a certain sin when it's all sin to God. <laughs> it's a sin to judge. Brother, you're just judging. You judging me now to tell me that I'm judging. Who's the judger of the judges? Isn't it a sin? You just said it's a sin, right? Well, then you can't do it. I mean, you know, I ain't judging. What well, is shut up? 
You can't accuse me without judging me. Can I keep going? Y'all know this is rich right here. You need this. The devil will even make you feel, ooh, this is the big one. You are not saved and have done too many bad things to be saved. Especially if you fell into sin while you were saved from sin. Amen. See, because the old church didn't believe that could happen. So they taught us once you were saved, you couldn't fall in sin no more. Anybody fell in sin once they were saved, we're never saved. Well, look at somebody and say, that's not the truth. <laughs> Ain't nobody graduating from this walk. We could all fall into sin. That's why he gave us an advocate with the Father who is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from what? He's not talking about before you were saved. You get the advocate after you say. Does that mean you're going to do some more stuff? Now, it may not be as severe as the armored truck. That takes weeks of planning. I'm pretty sure the Holy Ghost go invade that plan when y'all wearing the white makeup at least once in them two weeks, four weeks. <laughs> Somebody white makeup. <laughs> it took y'all back, didn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> but the advocate is after you're saved so that you can get forgiveness when you do sin. Amen? Anybody saved sin before? Why you were saved? It happens. Amen. That's why every day I repent. Amen. And I just want to make sure. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. Oh, but I've had some weary days. Yeah. Some sleepless night. But when I, when I look around and I think things over, all of my outweigh my I, I won't complain. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the no, I'm just <laughs> Amen. So I done had good days. I've had bad days, but I thank God I'm saved. Look at somebody say I'm still saved. First John 2 and 1, my little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. So look at somebody and say, sin not. Sin not. Don't sin. That's the objective. Yeah. Don't sin. But <laughs> just in case it happens, if any man sin. Now, who is he talking to? My little what? So if he's talking to the same folks. His little children. He says, if any of you sin, we have a what? An advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the who? His righteousness makes me righteous. That's what an advocate does. That means he's pleading my case. That means he's taking up for me. That means when I'm weak, he is strong. This gives the devil a brand new argument against you because you were supposed, this is the devil talking, you were supposed <laughs> to be made news and not fall back into that, right? Look at somebody say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Get that serpent lisp out of my ear. The devil always got a lisp. 
Get it out of my ear, snake. I ain't listening to no snake. That was a lie. The power of Christ's redeeming blood does not run out. It's perpetual and continuously available for us all whatever, whenever we ask for forgiveness and cleansing. The devil want to make it like the blood ain't powerful enough? Are you kidding me? That's why I signed up for this. Because I need the all-powerful blood of Jesus. I need the almighty power of God. I would have signed up for Buddhism if we just going to play around with it. I need forgiveness of my sin. The devil is just angry because he cannot be changed. And therefore, he wants us to feel like we can't change either. But God has made provision for us to be able to escape our past upbringing and trauma. So whatever happened to you, you can escape it. God has given you power over it. Look at somebody and say, I'm not like that anymore. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sin, who is we in 1 John? Who is 1 John talking to? He's talking to the people that's reading it, right? Ain't no demons reading it. No devils reading it. Wiccans ain't reading it. Buddhists ain't reading it. Hindus not reading it. He's talking about the children of God that are reading it. And he says, if we, look at somebody and say, we are we. We're we. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from how much? How much? All. All unrighteousness. Quit trying to pull my stuff from under the blood. That's under the blood of Jesus. And I'm trying to figure out who is without sin that they can even judge sin. That's why Jesus had to come. Because he's the only one without sin that could be the high priest and judge of sin. Jesus is our savior and able to save us from our sins, past, present, and what? Future. James 5 and 20. Let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a what? A multitude of sins. You must overcome the world to truly overcome your past. This is very important. Get this part. Because, <laughs> you know, that's why the devil wants you in the world with the lust of the flesh, lust of the light, and pride of life. Because it's going to always remind you of your past and make you feel you haven't changed. If he can make you feel you haven't changed, you ain't going to call on his power and use it for nothing. Because you're not going to feel like you can. Because you haven't changed. That's the worldly trap. That's why he wants you to think worldly. Always about getting it. Always about making it. Always about making money and being this and being that. And all that. He wants you in that worldly mindset so the devil can keep reminding you how trash you really are. And how you were. That's what being close to the world will do. The world is going to always bring up your past. It's going to bring it up in your mind and in your heart. Because if you came out of the world and you go back to the world, then you're back where you came from. So you must overcome the world to truly overcome your past. The Bible says that Christ overcame the world and we must overcome as well. Our past only has power over us when the world has power over us. Are you listening to me? When we surround ourselves with the wrong people, worldly people, or listen to worldly voices, the wrong voices, watching, listening to, and think on worldly things. When we constantly doing that, we find ourselves struggling with the blame and shame of our history. 1 John 2 and 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? Of the world. Amen. I tell people all the time, some stuff I can't ever watch again. Because it's going to take me back to where I was. Can't ever watch it again. 
Can't that, man, what was that movie they made with them uh, Easy E them? What was it? Straight up. I can't watch that. There's a, there's a demonic spirit on that. I started watching it because, I mean, just to see, because, you know, that's back in the truth behind hip hop days when I dealt with all them. And I knew them guys, all of that. So I start watching, and something came in my spirit. I was like, oh, no, no, I, I had to turn it off. I can't watch this. Now, you may can watch it and, and get in your word afterwards. I don't know. I can't watch it. I, I can't listen to it. I don't want to hear them songs. I struggle to let go of them songs. Some of y'all can't watch New Edition because you was in love with Ralph Tresvant. Had his posters up. You don't, don't watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for dudes that look like him to sleep with. With a high voice. Yeah, you can't, you, you should, you can't watch that. Amen. Oh, I can't get no amens. Yeah, the world will bring your past back. The world will bring your past back. You were saved, ready to move on and watch it straight out of Compton and a blunt just appeared out of nowhere. You didn't buy it. Nothing found it in an old jacket. You put on an old bomber jacket. So it's some aged weed from the 80s. It's got a whole different <laughs> blue smoke. You was doing good. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. Certain movies you can't watch. You can't watch. Amen. And should nobody be in here watching nude scenes in movies? No way. Amen. Look, okay, get the hand clap. I'm sorry, Pastor, but some of this stuff be good. It be good, Pastor. It be good. Yeah, but you ain't shaped like her. You sure don't need your husband in there watching it. I'm just in here telling the truth. That's what I'm doing. This is practical living. Practical. I remember when I used to try to listen to R&B and be saved. I tried it. I tried that. You know how you try to get the songs that ain't as bad. There ain't no cussing in this. And, I mean, when I hear it, I'm picturing my wife. Yeah, right. At first. I mean, what's wrong with, I mean, what's wrong with the weekend? His stuff is all common. Have you been to his Instagram? He turned himself into the devil. He put some fake stuff in his lip. I, I, why would you want to look like that? Disfigured his face and even his little Instagram, um, what you call the thing, the icon, what is that? Avatar is disfigured like a demon. I told y'all about him in truth in part 12, I think it was. He's a demon. Oh, but his word, he don't say nothing really. I'm not listening to no singing demon. Yeah, but they tell me what? How the pastor listening to booty music? I mean, it ain't that rapping and that boop the boop the pop the pop. It ain't none of that. I listen to it just, you know. What am I supposed to listen to, man? When, when I'm with my wife, what up? I don't know what you're supposed to listen Are you supposed to listen to something? Who told you that? Won't you learn how to play? <laughs> okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh. Need music, you know. And you know, that's in your 20s anyway. Start getting 30s stuff. <laughs> anyway, let me stop. Let me go. Let me move on. <laughs> First job. It's turned into the marriage retreat. <laughs> we, we surround ourselves with the <laughs> we surround ourselves with the wrong people or listen to the wrong voices 
watch, listen to, and think on the wrong things. We find ourselves struggling with the blame and the shame of our history. First John 2 and 16, for all that is in the world is what? That's why lust is in your heart, because you're in the world. Something in your life is bringing the world to you, and it's put lust in your heart. The lust of the eyes. That's why you got wandering eyes and looking at everybody and checking them out. Men and women. Because you ain't got too close to the world. And the lust, I mean, and the pride of life, that's the worst one. You know you're close to the world when you always trying to make it and prove something to somebody. Dollar chasing, fame chasing. Gotta be the dude. That's the pride of life. He said, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the prize of life, is not of who? The Father, Father, but of the world. So if you bring the world close, the world is going to expose your past, and you're going to go into depression. Amen. The devil needs us. Yeah, and, and this success thing, that's the same thing, pride of life. So when you don't make it, when you're out there striving and trying to be this and that, and it don't ever add up, then you're going to start blaming your past. If I had have done this, if I had have done that, and the accuser going to step right in, yeah, you blew it. But that's because you were chasing the world. Oh, I just preached. The devil needs us to focus on the past so he can torment us because of it. Philippians 3 and 13, brother, and I count not myself to have apprehended. This is Paul. Now, y'all know Paul's past. Paul was a murderer. Hell, the coats. Why, they were killing Stephen for no reason at all. Paul standing right there watching. And folks would not let him forget it. Almost every city he went to, oh, here comes that murderer. He didn't even really do it. Now, Moses really did it. Moses really did it. And got so afraid he ran from Egypt and hid. Look at somebody say, but God changed him. So he had an experience with the bush and the bush changed him. That experience gave him boldness. God forgave him at the bush and told him, now you go back to where you came from. And he went back boldly. He didn't care what they said. They, he walking up there, uh-huh, that's the dude that killed him. He didn't care. Brother, let my people go. Because he was under the power of God. He didn't even worry about his past. Paul the same way. They talked about him, all of that stuff. I told y'all the story when they were coming from Crete on the ship with the 300. And they, I mean, even after he saved all them people, they still going to try to bring up what he had done. So the devil needs us to focus on the past so he can torment us. But this is that same Paul. After they brought it all up, everywhere he went, he said, you know what? I count not myself to have made it. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are what? Behind and reaching forth unto those things which are what? So you can can focus on my past all you want because I'm going forward. And if that's happening behind me, I ain't going to pay attention to it no way. That's behind me. I press toward the mark. Of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Can I keep preaching? If we are in Christ, we should focus on the what? The future. I don't care. Look at somebody and say, it don't matter what you've done. Look at somebody and say, it don't matter what you've done. If we are in Christ, we should focus on the future, even when we have consequences from our past that are visible in our lives. We must trust the one that holds our future. Oh, listen to this, because only he can take what was accidental or consequential and make it work for our good. He's the only one. Buddhism ain't going to do that. Yoga's not. I don't care if you turn yourself into a pretzel. Yoga's not going to do that. Pull your leg off. It's still not going to.
take your past and make it work for your good. We must surrender it all to God and not carry blame and shame. Look at somebody and say, let go of the blame and let go of the shame. No matter how bad our past was, we now have what? So when you accept Christ, now you have help. You got in trouble before because you didn't have help. Now you have help. Summary! To overcome blame and shame, we must have fellowship with encouragers and admonishers in our lives. Yeah, if you by yourself, that's why they wanted you by yourself. That's why they don't want you to fellowship. That's why they want to isolate you and put you by yourself because you're going to get in your head and all you're going to see is the junk you did. And every time you start feeling good, you're going, to have, you're going to start feeling bad again. There's nobody there to remind you. No, you can't keep blaming yourself. You can't stay shame of yourself. You got to get past that. You need an encourager and an admonisher. This is why it's so important to be a part of a group of believers that can strengthen us when we lose sight of our newness in Christ. Have y'all ever needed that? Well, let me tell you something. Okay, put your hand down. But when you're in part of the fellowship and then you have, you know, solid uh, leadership and all that kind of stuff and you go through these spells, don't somebody always call? Don't somebody always come? Sometimes it's me. This is why it's so important to be a part of a group of believers that can strengthen us when we lose sight of our newness in Christ. The divorce that left us lonely, the pregnancies that left us with children outside of marriage, the abortion that left us feeling like a murderer, the crime that left us scarred in job searches and societal stigmas, the perversion that left our bodies tainted, the tattoos and piercings that are forever reminders of what we did and who we were and all the ways we hurt people. All of these things are plagues of your mind and will keep coming back to haunt you if you allow it. Putting yourself under the right teaching can counter these attacks. The right believers around you can keep you moving forward and trusting in God for soundness of mind and security in him. If you set up the right perimeters, you will not be plucked out. The devil may remind you of your past, but you remind him of God. If you resist and let him know that you are a new creation, no matter what your history says, he will have to flee each and every time. 2021 is the year we must focus on who we are and not who we were. I need to say that again. 2021 is the year. We must focus on who we are and not who we were. We cannot carry blame, shame, or past failures. Let this be the year to overcome your past and create a new story for yourself. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I got a new story. Acts 2 and 39. And the reason I'm reading this is because this is the kind of church this is going to be. I don't even want to say this, well, this is the kind of church we want it. No, no, no. This is the kind it's going to be. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall what? Call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now here's what they did. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and what? Fellowship. Fellowship. And in the breaking of bread and in what? Prayers. Prayers. Then fear came upon every soul. And this was a godly fear because they were seeing many wonders and signs that were done that hadn't happened before. Had seen this before. But this is the one. This verse. And all that believed was, they were what? Together. Together. And this is real important. And they had what? 
Now, people read this and say they had all things in common. That means they dressed alike and had the same money. I didn't, no, no. This means they were all equal. Amen. So no matter what they had done, no matter where they came from, no matter what was in their past, no matter how bad they were, no matter if they were canceled by society, by the cancel culture, if they were kicked out, left out, if they were hurt, if they hurt others, no matter what, the Bible said they, all, they had what? All things in common. Everyone equal. Y'all, everyone in here is equal. No matter where you came from, no matter what you did, we're equal. We're family. So our fellowship has to be made of us not looking at people's past, but seeing the future, what God can do. Amen? Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. I just, I believe God got all of that witchcraft out of ABC in 2020. I believe it. All that witchcraft. Focus on what folks did and who they were. And, all that. and folks only do that when they can't be what they're trying to be. Yeah, focusing on that. We didn't get the witchcraft out of here because we got all things in common. Yeah. Amen. You may make 20000 a year and somebody else may make a million dollars a year. But when we go break bread together, we just breaking bread. And we ain't talking about what we got and who we are. Trying to show out and the pride of life is dead in here. We got all things in common. So no matter where I came from, no matter what they say, no matter what they tell you, no matter where you came from, no matter what's on your, in your, on your record downtown, it don't matter. If you've been saved and sanctified and filled with this spirit, you are a new creation. Amen? Come on, lift your hands in here. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for your saving power. God, you saved us from who we used to be. You saved us from ourselves. You saved us, God. Some of us, God, were in situations that we thought was the end of our existence. We were in situations that we knew we couldn't come back from. So embarrassed, we didn't want to show our face in church. We were worried that people was talking, saying stuff, thinking things. Father God, we were hurting. But you saved us. You changed us. And right now with our hands lifted up, we declare in this building that we are new creations. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So right now, this day, in 2021, the beginning of 2021, we let our past go. We're not guilty of it anymore. We're not guilty. That's not me. I'm not guilty. God has forgiven me. Christ has redeemed me. That's not me. So every dream that haunts you, every thought, every vision, every voice, every accusation, every finger that is pointed, Everything that the devil is doing to try to make you feel inadequate and unworthy of his power. Be gone in the name of Jesus. We denounce the accuser right now. We denounce his power right now. We denounce everything he said. Everything he's told us. We are brand new. And we'll live in the newness of life. That's not me anymore. We let go of our past right now. We let go of the stigmas right now. We let go of those conversations right now. We let go of what others have said. We let go right now. And we will not carry it in this year. God has forgiven us. And Father God, we claim forgiveness right now of all of our sins. The power of the advocate to deliver us and set us free is active in our lives. Now, God, we will let go of the world. We'll let go of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, God. So get that out of our lives so we're not connected with the world where the world can bring our past up in the world because the, the devil will do us wrong, God. He'll bring us into his realm and then talk about us for going. 
So we denounce it right now in the name of Jesus. Every pledge to a false God, every false God uh, idol that's been in our lives. Father God, every action, whether it was us that were doing the yoga and on the pole and whatever it was, we denounce all actions that point to false God worship and sitting at the table with devils. Every oath that we took that was ungodly, every ungodly act, every act with a witch every act with a warlock anything where we joined ourselves to witchcraft any way we've joined ourselves to spells and incantations any candle we may have burned that we shouldn't have father god anything that we've done any building we visited anything we've read anything we've watched anything we've heard we denounce it right now clean our hearts god clean us up prepare us for your coming Make us whiter than snow. Be our advocate right now in the name of Jesus. Be our advocate, God, so that we can live for you and be rescued by you when you return. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Well, that's a lousy hand praise for what God just did for you. Give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, my past is gone. It will not go into this year with me. And I'm telling you, remember this now. Remember this day, what you said. Because the devil going to whisper in your ear tonight. And you tell him, say, my past is gone. All right. Stop it, PJ. Stop it, PJ. All right, you may be seated. Hallelujah. 